Concrete is more than a solid substance. It's also a symbol of strength and endurance. A building block for foundations that last, allowing legacies to grow. Look at these teams. Consider their pedigree. The programs they represent. Their history is here, built on a bedrock of pride. They live up to winning traditions, reach the game's highest ground yet again. Through unity of purpose, effort and skill, and motivation that comes from the deepest well. Love for their teammates, their school, and the game. In a stadium that stands on concrete, like the cornerstones of their success. These teams will compete for the NCAA Men's Lacrosse National Championship. Welcome to East Hartford, Connecticut. A championship weekend with more star power than ever. Features two of the biggest stars in the game and two of the most dominant programs of the past decade. Maryland undefeated for the Big Ten against ACC co-champion Duke in semifinal number two. The winner advances to Monday where Virginia, the reigning champs, awaits. And a Shroff with Quint Kesnick. Paul Carcaterra is down in the field and will be with us in a moment. Over the last 10 years, nobody has won more and nobody has been on the big stage more than these two teams. Yeah, we've enjoyed our time this week and this season with John Tillman, head coach of Maryland, and John Donowski at Duke. And the two holistic coaches, that's the whole student athlete. This year they talked about common sense, discipline, and sacrifice. Off the field and what you're going to see today on the field. Maryland may be undefeated, but Duke was the preseason favorite. They became the overwhelming favorite with the addition of a transcendent senior and a generational freshman. Michael Sowers graduated from Princeton 2020. He's got an extra year of eligibility. He's in the graduate school at Duke. What separates Sowers from the bunch is his quickness, his short area ability to accelerate. He's got amazing feet. He's like a point guard in basketball, Allen Iverson-like quickness, where he can free up his hands and find his teammates or turn the corner. He is fierce. He transferred to Duke, well, because he had a dream, and that is to win a national championship. He told us this week, these are the moments that I live for. This is why I chose Duke. A finalist for the Tawarton, the Heisman of lacrosse. He's second all-time in points in Division I history, and he is flanked by Brennan O'Neill, the number one recruit in the country, the biggest high school recruit in the game of college lacrosse. He has exceeded the hype. His high school highlights jumped off the page. They're eye-popping. All he's done at Duke is live up to that reputation. The kid is throwing flames at the corners of the goal. Kark, Maryland says, I see Sowers, I see O'Neal, and I raise you Jared Bernhardt. Well said, Anish, and nobody to date in college lacrosse has been able to slow down the Terps. Jared Bernhardt, nobody, and his secret sauce without question is his speed. He's like a rocket ship. The acceleration at X and behind has him shot ready in the blink of an eye. In space, Bernhardt shows you why he's an all-state option quarterback in Florida in high school. Bye bye. He's the nation's leading scorer. He's on a mission. Bernhardt is a turf legend and looking for his second national title. Now today, he has not seen the likes of a defender like JT Giles Harris in pregame. I spoke to John Donowski and he said, they will put the National Defender of the Year, JT Giles Harris, on Jared Bernhardt. JT Giles Harris, another elite football player in high school. He's got great footwork and he's strong as an ox. This is the matchup that I've waited all season long for. All right, guys, we're You're not going to come together and shake. You're just going to go to your positions. Go as you'll stay. We're just waiting for zero. Man, congratulations on getting here and good luck. 
uncertainty of the season, dealing with testing and protocols, right, uneven schedules. No, 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 cross, please. <laughs> go, go your spot. Go and now. suddenly right. you can't shake, You're or apparently there. you can. <laughs> You're already there. My spot. Times are changing, and thankfully so. Since 2011, this is the fourth semifinal meeting between Maryland and Duke. The Terps, a former ACC member, three ACC teams got to championship weekend, and John Tillman on the right. His Terps, like Diane, returning to cheers for the finale. John Donowski, three national titles. Nobody has more Division I wins than the Duke head coach. Jake Naso, the faceoff man for Duke, having one of the best freshman seasons by a faceoff man in history. Justin Shockey at Maryland. Faceoffs have been an issue for Maryland, Quint. But in their quarterfinal right, win against down. Notre Dame, they won the key faceoffs down the stretch. Jockey wins the opener for the Terps. A Maryland team that played a Big Ten only schedule until the NCAA tournament. Dispatched of Vermont in round one. Rallied from three goals down in the fourth quarter to beat Notre Dame in South Bend in the quarterfinals. An undefeated team. Jared Bernhardt, one in red. Don't take your eyes off of him. Bubba Fairman Thank now you. on the invert. Fairman shot saved by Mike Adler. A transfer from St. Joe's where he was a three-year captain. It's a Duke team that is heavy on experience, transfers, and grad students. 16 grad students. Terry Lindsay plays it to the wing. Duke generally doesn't go quickly. Look like they might, but they'll settle into their offense. Michael Sowers, 23 and white. One of the great scores of all time. Brennan O'Neill. The freshman fighting through a double team, and it's Brett Maycar, the All-American, taking it away. But Maycar fell near the end line, and it comes back to Duke. Robertson and Sowers converged. Sometimes... The first minutes of, of these big games can be a little bit herky-jerky. And it's good to get in, get a touch of the ball, get hit, make a check, kind of take the edge off, so to speak. Nakai Montgomery, 15 and white. Another All-American for the Blue Devils. Now Sowers against Nick Grill, Defensive Player of the Year in the Big Ten. Logan McNaney comes up with the save out of bounds. It's Maryland ball. McNaney closest to the ball where it went out of bounds. And that's how possession is awarded on a shot. We told you about Adler. He's the best goalie Duke has had since they started winning championships for John Donowski. St. Thomas Aquinas played high school across from Florida, transferred from St. Joe's as a teenager, was attacked by a shark. An avid surfer. Typical goalie went back in the water. Bernhardt with his man hung up. And a crease violation on his teammate Daniel Maltz. Kark, this Duke team, for all the talent they have, John Donowski was pretty candid. He said they still haven't figured out their identity. They're here more on talent. In chemistry. I would agree with you, Anish, and it's the middle of the field. I think they've had some consistency on the defensive end with JT Giles Harris and Kenny Barra. Offensively, the Sowers connection with Brennan O'Neill and Joe Robertson there. The midfield, though. We, we've seen so many different variations of this midfield group in terms of the continuity and running the same lines throughout the course of the season really didn't exist. The blue in the middle is the missing piece. Today, they can solve it. That equates to your workouts, Kark. A lot of upper body, a lot of calves. Not much core in the middle. Adler retreats to the cage. Bernhardt top side and the score. One in red has been unstoppable.
Terps do a terrific job matching feet on the ride, okay? That is finding bodies basically in, in a zone coverage and covering. JT Giles Harris, he's forced to throw that ball to a man who's covered. It gets away from him at the other end. Unleash the rocket ship. First step to fast top side. That's where he's been dominating matchups. Rarely does he have to use his rollback because he gets his feet and his hands free with the burst. That is the rocket ship of Jared Bernhardt. He had six goals in round one. Five more in the quarterfinals. Now his 12th goal of this NCAA tournament. Maryland's all-time scoring leader, Shockey. This is a Terp offense that blitzed its way through the Big Ten. It's a league, quite honestly, that a little subpar defensively, but man, this team can move the ball. Rapid, crisp passing, bodies are moving. Offensive coordinator Bob Benson's got this team playing just a, a beautiful brand of half field across. Logan Wiskit Nauskis now. Adler out of the cage. Back pedals in. Wisnowskis against Kenny Bauer. There's Bernhardt. Over to Wisnowskis. His sweet spot. It'll stay with Maryland. The shot clock resets on a shot on goal. Anything that hits the goalie, the pipe, or if it goes in. Terps getting their looks. Here comes Kyle Long, an adept feeder out of the midfield. Anthony DeMeo, 16 in red, the quarterfinal hero. Feet in front, looking for Maltz. It's picked up by the top defenseman in the country, JT Giles Harris, the Schmeisser Award winner. up within the game a grill and showers Kark what are you looking for in that one-on-one -on -one? when you look at the body of work of Nick Grill no one has had the upper hand he's five foot seven five eight he's guarded six foot three guys but he also has the feet to match Michael Sowers and Maryland also has the secondary matchup with Brett Maycar 43 in red to defend Brennan O'Neill the fantastic freshman so I think Maryland has the pieces regards to their defense matching Duke's strength on attack. Nice pick defense by Maryland as Duke's using the pick and roll game. Logan McNaney in the cage for Maryland. He has never lost a game as a starter. From Corning, New York, the same head coach, the same hometown as his head coach, John Tillman is a meal with a missile high. McNaney was really good in the second half last week at South Bend Notre Dame. Made some plays outside of the crease. Ground ball pickups and a couple of aggressive outlet passes that really made the difference in that comeback. Sowers at the Lowry pick. Grill the takeaway. Roman Puglisi clears for Maryland. And three early turnovers for both teams. Terps going quickly, save Adler on the shot from Griffin Brown. The Colgate transfer, a pair of goals in four of his last five games for the Terps. Duke in transition, Dyson Williams with a great look. And missed the mark, he scored a goal in almost every game that streak ended last week. They both teams, a little sketchy in the substitution game. Duke runs their personnel off the field. Maryland had a, a numbers advantage that shouldn't have existed. Then they counterattack Maryland. It's rare to see the Blue Devils run. I think they need to add that to their arsenal today. Transitional lacrosse. Nikai Montgomery back to Sowers. Grill had a takeaway last time. 
Sowers. This is what he does so well. Has to give it up. And the Maryland bench hopping. Throws a good matchup for Sowers. He can match feet with him. Kevin Quigley. Montgomery has the short stick Kaufman. He had three goals against Maryland in the semifinals back in 2018. That was as a freshman. And the Terps get the backup. That's, there's McNaney again, making a play outside of the crease. Not assuming that the Duke player was closer, but actually sprinting to the end line when Sowers and company stood there as spectators. I think they surprised Sowers, right? Because McNaney, when you're a goalie and you can anticipate that shot going wide in one motion, He's tracking the shot, but then turning to the end line to get that ball, and Sowers is in disbelief. Now Bernhardt. He's got his man hung up. Adler out of the cage again. He's not afraid to press out. JT Giles Harris stays with Bernhardt, and one of the rare times Jared Bernhardt has been denied topside. Fairman beats Lyshow. Skip pass, Kyle Long down the alley. That one hits the pipe. Stay with Maryland. Shot clock refresh. Duke catches the break there. Again, a gorgeous offensive pattern. Ball reversal. Body's always moving. Defensive roles have to change. It's hard to keep up with this group. They get the ball in and out of their sticks. Duke pressing out now. Logan Wisnowskis, nicknamed Groot. Sharp spoken attacker. Duke with the cause, the turnover. Wilson Stevenson, number 19, who's been through countless surgeries on his leg after a horrid injury in the quarterfinals two years ago, making a big play. Two years ago at Hofstra, eight surgeries later. Dyson Williams with a bounce shoot and is saved by McNeely. Hard to get the sense. Maryland is almost daring Duke to play fast. They are. The Terps can get up and down right here. We got one. Bernhardt! Oh, what a save by Adler! Crease violation! Are you kidding me with that save? That was ridiculous. He was completely lunging, had no balance, and somehow lunges and puts his stick back in front of the lacrosse ball. Just never give up, never give up. Deal with the fakes. Williams again finds the back of the net. Dyson Williams was Duke's leading goal scorer in the short of the 2020 season. He's had to take a lesser role with the influx of talent. He ties it at one, but it starts with Adler. Point blank range. Kyle Long pings the post. Blue Devils forks up to catch a break. Watch this. Doesn't get any better than that. Unbelievable. Adler gives him the juice. Williams does what he does so well. Closes the deal. We got another one in East Hartford. All tied up. Both Duke and Maryland surviving in the quarterfinals, both needing overtime wins. Say, give credit to Charlie Toomey and the Loyola Greyhounds for digging in last Sunday up at Notre Dame. Brendan O'Neill had a monster game off the dodge and on the extra man. He's really found his sweet spot. We head to overtime after Loyola had had the lead. Guess who? The Iceman, Joe Robertson. His third overtime game winner of the season. Jared Bernhardt was unstoppable. Five more goals running by the ACC Defensive Player of the Year, Jack Fieldsy. And in overtime, Captain Clutch for Maryland has been Anthony DeMeo. Tony time, winning it for the Terps. An old school give and go. Maryland was down, what, three goals late in that game? And they just played the full 60. Notre Dame may have been the best 50-minute team in the country this season. A face-off violation, so Maryland has now won all three face-offs. 
you brought up a good point last week where Maryland Rutgers, the face-off numbers were not good heading into the NCAA tournament. That more of a result of the quality of face-off men in the Big Ten. Yeah, it wasn't like the Patriot League, a league that really didn't have great Fogos except for Mike Sisselberg of, of Lehigh. The Big Ten had great Fogos across the board. Bernhardt again. Gets around JT Giles Harris, picked up by Lindsay on the switch. This is dangerous for Duke. Bernhardt plays it back to DeMeo. Look at the way the Terps move the ball. That's how they hit the turf. It's Fairman. So they're looking for layups and dunks, this Maryland. I think the way to defend them, two opportunities. One, you just pack it in and give them the outside shot. The second would be you play them on the perimeter and make them score unassisted goals. Brower came out on the switch on Bernhardt. A short stick matchup here for Wisnowskis. Max! Max! Bernhardt. Shot blocked. JT Giles Harris there to deny DeMeo. Duke's packing it in pretty good right now. Skip pass intercepted. Tyler Carpenter in the passing lane, beating the crease. Sowers, shot saved, McNaney. The Terps come away with it. It's Kyle Long the other way. Long has it knocked loose. Ooh, man. Bodies flying. Ooh, Two blue that's levels went down. That's JT good. Giles Harris slow to get up. That's not good. Th and this the is national a national defensive player of the year limping noticeably. The Maryland player hit a Duke player who then hit JT Giles Harris right around the knee. There's the hit. And teammates collide. Clean hit. Ooh, he's lucky the left knee hyperextends a bit. Frank Marinello will come in for JT Giles Harris. The niche. That is the case with Marinello, but they'll put Kenny Brower on Jared Bernhardt. Brower's defended a lot of teams X, opposing X, OG, number ones. OG, he's a cover guy, an elite defender in himself, 43 in white. So he, he's used to those kind of matchups. When he's on Bernhardt, they'll support, but they have faith in him. Brower that time defending Holden, the Hobart transfer. Bernhardt's got Marinello, draws the slide, the pass tipped. Maryland keeps it on the offensive half. It was a tip pass. Duke's really packing it in defensively. Daring the outside shot. Look how tight their splits are. Holden again, the former statesman. And that's Brower making the play defensively. Duke has been active. Bernhardt on the ride. Another big ground ball. Stevenson has it. Here comes O'Neill, charging through the cage, looking for the cutter, Camille. And Grill's got it for Maryland. You can tell Duke is not comfortable playing unsettled. They haven't really done much of it this season. Not in, yeah, it's not in their DNA, Carp. No, and Maryland can. You look at Maryland's defensive midfield group. I mean, they're shorties. Roman Puglisi, Alex Smith. Those guys have the green light. They can run end to end. Bubba Fairman out of Sandy, Utah. How long? Up! Wisnowskis and DeMeo play catch. Bernhardt, he's got two. 65 goals now for Jared Bernhardt. Blue Devils have an opportunity. O'Neal has got a three on two. Pass off the mark and grill. Scoops it up at the other end. One thing that we've just just loved about Jared Bernhardt's game this year, Clark, is his willingness to play without the ball. When you talk to John Tillman, he'll tell you Jared might be their best off-ball player. We've seen him multiple times on tape throughout the course of the year.
playing the inside game because when teams are doubling him and there's so much attention on one in red, he can go inside and he can play that game and cat and mouse his defender and he gets shots off so quickly like a crease attack in Wood. That goal he scored twice exactly the same play against Michigan this season from that high slot as a right-handed cutter. And Kark, uh, no disrespect to volume shooters, but Bernhard's efficiency is off the charts. He's now scored on more than 50% of his shots. It's unbelievable what he's been able to do in terms of just maximizing those opportunities. And Pager, uh, this flag is down right now. Bernhardt shooting over 50%. Red, two way. Red, two way. Illegal procedure, 30 seconds. What was illegal about the procedure? Only kidding. That's not a foul right there. Not sure why that was called a foul. No flag. No flag. No flag. No flag. Officials in the stick. No flag. We're all even. So the flag is waved off, which is the right call. Bobby Benson, offensive coordinator for Maryland, negotiating and negotiating well. He knows the rules. I mean, there's not. A rule in that book, that thick book, Anish, that Bobby Benson doesn't know. I mean, when you have him on your staff, it's it's like you have another official in regards to just breaking everything down. But one last note on the Bernhardt. Quick, when do you remember a perimeter attackman shooting over 50%? I mean, th that's nuts to me. I mean, normally guys in his style, they're like 35% shooters. Agreed. Benson's got a little bit of Rain Man in him, doesn't he? In the NCAA tournament, Bernhardt, 13 out of 19. Robertson, who had the overtime winner in the quarters, bobbled it. McNaney looked like a beetle trapped in amber and somehow got out of it and then throws it away. Duke's got to find some rhythm in their half-field set. Thirteen turnovers between the two teams in this first quarter. Eight by Maryland. Terps with a 2-1 lead. Bernhardt the offense for the Big Ten champions. Dyson Williams the lone goal for the co-ACC champs. Sowers milks the final seconds of quarter number one. Gets the pick from Williams. Grill matching feet. Brennan O'Neill. He's been quiet so far. O'Neill ran into a double. That one hit the official. And time runs out in quarter number one. The Maryland bench fired up. Jared Bernhardt continues. To amaze, a human cheat code, two more goals for the Tawartan favorite, 2-1 Terrapins after one. The NCAA Men's Lacrosse Championships is brought to you by PlayStation Plus. Duke head coach John Donowski telling us he recruited Jared Bernhardt and said, I recruited him off of his football tape. It was an option quarterback from Orlando, Florida. Got offers from Navy to come be their option QB. I, I think the one he wanted was Georgia Tech. And every time I, I saw Paul Johnson, I'm like, you got to take a look at this kid from Orlando. Well, he ends up going to Maryland and playing lacrosse. His dad. Jimmy Bernhardt, a longtime college football coach, started out at Hofstra, then Brown, then UCF. His dad passing away in 2019, and, and Jared still has the dream to play college football. The physicality of being an option quarterback, that is dealing with a defender on your hands and having your eyes up to see your teammates, is much like executing the triple option. That is dive, keep or pitch 
Ryan Boyle, Tommy Schreiber, Doug Shanahan, Jared Bernhardt, lacrosse legends, or all high school Ladies option gentlemen. quarterbacks. I like that. Dive, Count. keep, or pitch option principles. Set. Well, that was John Donowski's assessment when we said, hey, how do you defend Bernhardt? He said it has to be a team effort. It's not about matchups. And then he added, what we're trying to do is defend a football player playing lacrosse. Maryland turns it over. JT Giles Harris took a spill in that first quarter back in there for Duke. You know, it's interesting. You watch the Maryland offense. It's like hot potato. And when I spoke to John Donowski right before the game, he mentioned the ball can't get sticky. Can't die in oh, sticks. Like Michael Sowers has to make those quicker decisions. Is it my time to go or is it my time to move the rock? I think Maryland's been masterful at that at times throughout the course of the year. It's been them in North Carolina and everyone else in terms of sharing. Duke, at times, the ball sticks too much. Who can win a matchup, Duke, from the uh, cart from the perimeter? If you're Duke, who can win a Duke matchup other than Sowers? I think Nakai has to be that guy. 15 and white. First team All American, Nakai Montgomery, but he's been quiet the last four or five games. Quigley turned away by Puglisi, the short stick. Montgomery, great beat. McNaney, the denial. Four saves by Logan McNaney. Duke told us that midfield production had to be better today. Did not get much from that unit against Loyola. A game in which John Donowski said his team played tight. Worst offensive performance of the season, according to Dino. Here comes DeMeo. From Maryland to the challenge this week, recovery. John Tillman said it took his team three, four days to recover after the showdown with Notre Dame. Good look here by DeMeo. Tony time. There's the ball movement. That's hot potato, lacrosse's version. Everyone knows there's one more pass to be had. And Anthony DeMeo, game-winning goal in overtime. Against Notre Dame, out South Bend, on the road, dug deep. This time sets his feet and finds that far pipe on Adler. The exclamation point is an eight-yard shot with no defender in your face. The ISO of Adler shows he has no chance. The reflex is just not that quick. But it all starts with a double team drawn on the far wing that gets the defense in motion. Maryland spacing. Perfect. Hey, hey, 10-yard crisp passes right on the money. In and out of sticks. Easy layup. A 4-1 face-off advantage for Maryland. And we get movement against the Terps. Duke ball. Sean Lowry, 9 in white, a 6th year senior from Foxborough. At our production meeting last night, we had a, uh, a strong debate on the spelling of Foxborough, Massachusetts. Ends in an O or a O-U-G-H? According to Jess, our content associate, has done a fantastic job. O-R-O. O-R-O. O-R-O-U-G-H. Brennan O'Neill on the doorstep cashes in. Goal is easier to spell. G-O-A-L. It's 3-2. Tillman looking at the autopsy report from this goal. The damage report says loose ball on the ground, over pursued by a bunch of red jerseys. O'Neal is a horse. It's a freshman. 6-2 or 6-3. Look at those legs. 230 pounds, much faster than advertised, Paul. And the subtleties, too. Did you see 
the instincts in terms of putting the stick in the inside when he felt the pressure from Maryland's Brett Makar. This kid is phenomenal. Watch his high school highlights in terms of his creativity. And, you know, a lot of people have compared him to a John Grant Jr. The way he's built and the way he moves, he's got flashes of Gary Gate. And I'm not saying he's the next Gary Gate, who's the best player to ever play the game, but he's got flashes of that in him. A failed clear. Now Bernhardt with a head of steam. Fakes the pass. Over to Wisnowskis. Tried to play it back, and Maryland couldn't hang on. Duke with a transition opportunity. Carpenter cranks. And O'Neal closest to the ball when it went out. McNaney back into the cage. Grill goes to work on Sowers. Duke clearing has been an issue all season. Park, you brought it up with the midfield. You're still seeing Duke trying to figure out the best midfield combination. Aiden Denenza out there. J.P. Basile. Skip pass. Denenza, the freshman, shoots too high. He, Jake Naso, and Brennan O'Neill all played at St. Anthony's in Long Island. Yes, and they have the nation's number one recruit in St. Anthony's, Andrew McAdory, heading to Duke next year. Sowers still without a point. Brett Maycar. Go ahead, Kark. Show him some Yorktown love. That's my guy. Brett Maycar from my hometown, Yorktown, New York. Everyone is so proud of that guy in terms of not only the way he plays, but his character. I say it all the time. If you don't know Brett Maycar, he's the type of guy that will shovel the old lady's driveway on a snowstorm and not even tell her he did it. That is a class act, that kid. Kind of like a niche paying for uh, all the coffee at Starbucks. <laughs> Elkhart, Indiana. As they say in Yorktown, Kark, no pooch. <laughs> no good deed goes unpunished. That'll be $48, sir. The gentleman in front paid for mine. I oh, got the car behind me. Didn't know it was a van. <laughs> How much? <laughs> 48 bucks for a seven dollar coffee and sandwich <laughs> serves you right oh wow the maryland's continue as a moving pick by list they're getting good looks aren't they i mean they they're are. very comfortable in their half field offensive sense it's a bit surprising that maryland is only up a goal 11 turnovers that's been the issue for the terps though A flag is down. This may be offside. This is against Maryland. Montgomery with a running start. Here's Nikai, senior out of Dallas, Texas. Plans to come back next year. Dangerous pass. Quigley. Denied. And we get the penalty. McNaney's super sharp today. Lefty goalie. Likes his hard rock music. Actually shares music with head coach John Tillman. Red. Four. Off sides. 30 seconds. Motley Crew, Jane's Addiction, Stone Temple Pilots, The Stones, Metallica. Tillman kind of educating him to uh, some of the classics from the 80s. That's on brand with Tillman and Logan McNaney is from Tillman's hometown, Corning, New York. They love rock and roll up there. Duke has been lights out with the man up of late. Six for its last eight. Looking for the equalizer. Montgomery, the crank in McNaney. He's seeing it. He is on it, man. And he's patient, Quint. When you watch him just sitting on that shot, man, there's there's no antsy feet. He's very still. Makar has Puglisi. Here comes Roman. Now Wisnowskis. Chased down by JT Giles Harris.
NBA playoffs. First round continues with Sixers Wizards, Jazz Grizzlies. All that tonight on ESPN. DeMeo against Montgomery. He's played a little defense. John Donowski okay with it. Adler comes up with a save. Kick save and a mute. His fourth. McNaney's got seven at the other end. New 82nd to shot clock. Bernhardt. A hat trick for Bernhardt. He's got three of the four Maryland goals. And he now has more goals in an NCAA tournament than any other Terrapin in school history. 14 goals in this tournament. One more than the 13 by Mark Douglas back in 1991. Be the best. It's been a shooting clinic, a shooting gallery. They're getting all the looks that they want. He's done it off the dodge, Quinn. He's done it in the inside game. And on his third of the half, he shows you some plant rip. Make it count. The Maryland Terrapins looking to become the first undefeated champion since Virginia in 2006, 14-0. 12 of those wins against the Big Ten. Big Ten champions, regular season and tournament. Beat Notre Dame in a hard-fought quarterfinal in South Bend. We never heard a complaint. Hey, we're the three seed. We have to go on the road to take on the six seed in the quarterfinals. And since John Tillman took over, they have been a fixture in this game and on this stage. What's impressed me most about John Tillman this year is the human connection he's been able to make with these players. He lightened up. He kind of turned down the volume in terms of their practice workload. Instead, buying wiffle balls and wiffle ball bats and allowing the guys to hang out after practice. And his tendency is to be very intense and very detail-oriented. He had to adapt, and he did that. Now, we did see him coach yesterday a walkthrough practice that may have been one of the most impressive we've seen in our time covering championship weekend. Incredibly detailed. There's Kyle Long, saved by Adler. But I think he understands the push-pull that goes along with, hey, if we're going to practice that hard, that detail, that specific, I also need to go easy on my guys, kind of cut them free at the end of practice to just be young student-athletes who are dealing with a really difficult spring semester during the pandemic. 100%. You want your team to smile more than ever, right? Everything off the field that they're dealing with and the restrictions. Tillman is one of those guys, preparation-wise, it's hard to find anyone who's more detail-oriented, but he also understands the journey of these athletes and, and making them happy and having them peak in a moment like this in May. Sours too high. Quint, I go back to 2017, and, and John Tillman was very candid about this back then with us, having Matt Rambo and Colin Heacock, big personalities. That helped him grow as a coach. His biggest challenge with this group, you've got the different parts coming in from the transfer portal. You've got Jared Bernhardt. In a year where it's really tough to form relationships. Somehow he's found a way to get it done. Robertson to Lowry. Kark, what's wrong with this Duke offense right now? They're not finding their groove in terms of initiating the Dodgers, right? Who is the guy that's going to break their man down? Well, right now, How about Sowers? 23. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blink. Wow. A Don't highlight like real individual effort and John Tillman's reaction. Yeah. Hey, sometimes there's no defense for greatness. There's only one other player in college lacrosse history that I've seen with the quickness, the electric feet, like Michael Sowers. That's Mikey Powell, the great Syracuse sport time All-American and National Attackman of the Year for four straight years. 
Michael Sowers has that in his game. In a fraction of a second, he can explode and find pay dirt. His traction looks terrific today. Some wondered about the rain and playing on this grass field. If he'd have that cutting ability, Ooh, uh, it just answered it, didn't he? Face-off violation on Maryland. Not for the Terps. Playing on grass is something they haven't done in more than four years. I can't believe how this grass is held up. Uh, honestly, I thought it would be a, a mess. If you look at the face-off X, like, it's not even chewed up at all. Look at the goal crease. This is 100% natural grass and all the rain that we had overnight during the first game. Traction, to be quite honest with you, is, is not a factor. Swim move to get free by Quigley. Back to Montgomery. Back to X and Sowers. He's got Grill hung up. Sowers waiting, probing. Dumps it off to O'Neal. Freshman. Looking for Sowers. Grill knocked it down. It's picked up by Quigley. 20 to shoot. Sowers and Grill again. That's been a fun matchup so far. O'Neal against the short stick. Shot clock winding down. Ledman dropped it. And it's picked up by Alex Smith. The son of DeMore Smith, the head of the NFL Players Association. Alex Smith has guys like Ray Lewis and Ed Reed on speed dial. Need a pep talk, Ray Lewis is a good one to get one from. Skis to Bernhardt. Three goals today. Bernhardt, the all-time leading scorer at Maryland. Goals and points. Fairman. Over to Kyle Long. DeMeo has a cut in this now, Skis. You can set that to music. Poetry in motion for Maryland. This half offense has been humming all season. Long. Down the wing was Nowskis who had cut left-handed across the middle of the formation. Continues his run behind the net and then in front. The defender's allowed in the crease, but for some reason decides to trail Wisnowskis, who then has a step. The ball stays hot. They are so unselfish. You see the big lefty from Sykesville via Boys Latin School, via Syracuse as well. Yeah, you can teach that off-ball awareness. I've said it before, too. He's one of those guys, like, he's not fast, but he always gets a step on someone. He reminds me of of Dirk Nowitzki. When I watched Dirk Nowitzki play basketball for all those years, he gets his hands free. He doesn't run by anyone. It's just it's the little subtleties in what he does off ball. He felt that his defender was ball watching for just a fraction of a second, and that's where he got that leverage. Griffin Brown over to Eric Holden. Now Bernhardt against Giles Harris. Bernhardt's got his man hung. Adler presses out. They've got the matchup. Bernhardt against the shorty. Help coming. Bernhardt plays it up top. Perfection. Griffin Brown, the Colgate transfer. Maryland stopped turning the ball over. And since they've done that, they've had their way with this defense. When you mentioned pack it in, pack it in. Griffin Brown is the stretch shooter. A couple of years ago, up in the Carrier Dome when he was playing for Colgate, four goals spraying from downtown. When you have the attention of Bernhardt behind, you see all those white jerseys? If someone can find that passing lane, you will have time to set your feet, let it rip, and get it by Adler. 
Gold Cam tells the story. But Bernhardt gets the matchup against the Shorty, and that's an automatic double team. So JT Giles Harris rotates to him. And Bernhardt, like the option quarterback he was, he reads the coverage. He throws the skip pass, turn and rake. Maryland's offense is a thing of beauty. If you're a, a middle school or high school player watching this game or a young youth coach, tape this game. Play these formations back because these guys are flowing. Tomorrow, noon Eastern on ESPNU, it's the Women's Lacrosse Championship. BC and Syracuse, Charlotte North, best player in the country. The star for the Eagles. For more information on the 2021 Men's and Women's Lacrosse Championships, visit NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. John Kanowski. Looking for an answer. Duke down by three. A team that Donowski admitted was still searching for its identity. Kark. Searching for an identity. They had pieces to the puzzle, right? But then you bring in Michael Sowers, a generational talent who's used to having the ball on a stick for so long. So how do you incorporate him into the game? On the other side of the field, though, I, th I think they felt the confidence in terms of the continuity with JT Giles Harrison. He's got that Bernhardt matchup right now. And if you remember in the first quarter, he went out for a little while. His left leg right now is wrapped. And when you're going against a speed guy like Jared Bernhardt, you want your top dog to be 100%. Shockey wins the faceoff. Accelerates into the attack box. Shoots up goal! And the Maryland bench explodes! Fourth career goal for Justin Shockey. It's three straight for the Turks. I'll tell you, this big senior's been doing it for a long time. He's part of the hog pen. That's the nickname for the face-off specialist down in Maryland. He's an avid whitewater kayaker. He's a good, good athlete who's evolved his game with the rule change and he sniffs this one out you don't give me the respect i make you pay look at the placement too old school overhand right into the bottom corner and i'll tell you what coming into this game no one felt that maryland had the advantage at the face-off dot with shockey naso has been terrific this season for duke the best fresh freshman face-off man in the nation but john tillman in big moments when he has time to prepare, if you remember back in 2017, using the entire unit to capitalize on those face-off moments. Yeah, Maryland has such a strong history of turning what appears to be a, a face-off uh, potential shortcoming in, into a, a, an advantage by using film work and by getting great performances from their face-off men. In 2017, they found an answer against T.D. Erlin and Jake Withers and to Trevor Baptiste. Think about who they had to go through to get to the championship in 2017. Coming up at halftime, a first half breakdown of this game. Plus, we'll recap Virginia and North Carolina. Chris Cotter, Dave Petromala, Matt Ward in the studio. I would be interested in hearing Coach Petromala's opinion on how you best handle Jared Bernhardt and the Maryland offense. You go into a time machine and you get him, 21-year-old Dave Petromala. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean, what are your options? I, I, I would, at this stage, what Duke's doing is not working. Okay, they're trying to pack it in. Maybe you just extend Coach, and say, out, "Hey, Maryland, out. if you're going to score goals, it's got to be unassisted. You got to run by us." But the problem with that is Bernhardt's going to run by every time. Every so, time. So he needs a double. But maybe the other guys don't. And, and so that gets really complicated. As the line goes, there was only one catch, and that was catch 22. Maryland has it again. Three goals in less than a minute for the Terps. And they've got their largest lead at four. Virginia awaits the winner on Championship Monday. The 
if it is Virginia and Maryland, a rematch of that 2019 controversial quarterfinal. And a Virginia shot that hit the post was counted as a goal. Fairman. Mouskis' shot looked like it hit somebody in the hands. Virginia and Maryland also met the 2011 National Championship. Bernhardt gets the pick. Feeding the crease. Snapped up by the Fairman. All Terrapins. Everyone talks about Bernhardt. His dodging ability. The two feeds we've seen, Quint, in this second quarter are next level and they're very different. The prior feed that he had on the Griffin Brown goal went right through the heart of the Duke defense. That one, he just felt the slide coming from inside. His head was up in a perfect spot feed. Offensive coordinator Bob Benson is delivering a gem in this game. They send Bernhardt a pick, it changes the matchup. Duke's got a double team. Meanwhile, inside, it's a scissors cut. You got two guys going in opposite directions. Dunk City. Bernhardt now one point away from tying Ray Altman's single season school record for points, 93. He's got the career mark for points, for goals. He's got the single season record for goals this year. 66 now. It almost doesn't matter what happens in the second half of this game or Monday. Quint, I don't see how he doesn't win the Tawar time. A penalty coming against Duke. Brown streaking down the alley. Cuts it back. Didn't get much on the left-handed shot. Still a live ball. Bernhardt was going for it. Giles Harris down again. And Maryland will go man up. White, 2 6. Illegal body check. One minute. John Geppert legging that ball up, and that's just high, clear violation. It's the wrap on the left knee of JT Giles Harris, National Defender of the Year. A one minute man up. Now, Maryland can take this into halftime and start the second half with the ball, no face off. But if they get a good look, I would. Imagine no. they try to tack one on here if they can. No, no, they're going to hold this thing. Now they're going to hold it. it. Looked like they were probing to see if something is there. So if Maryland hangs onto the ball, and they will, Terps will have the ball, no face off, and an extra man for the first 26 seconds of the third quarter. Maryland closing the half. On a 4-0 run, Duke got to within 4-3 on a goal by Sowers. The Terps respond. Bernhardt has had a hand in five of the eight Maryland goals, and nobody has figured out the kryptonite for one in red. John Tillman said, saying to us, Bernhardt's only point of reference is himself. And he has proved that today in so many different ways. The dodging game, the shooting game, the passing game. Park. Yep. You know, Coach, offensively, the ball movement and the extra pass, where did you see the seams in the Duke defense? Well, I think that's that's the thing. We've been getting good matchups, and then when we've gotten good matchups or we've gotten hung situation when they pull the goalie out, we've just really emphasized to our guys just keep moving, 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 and then we've drawn slides. We just talked about keep that ball hot and then attack the inside, make sure they defend you, and make the extra pass, and it's an unselfish group for sure. Coming into the game on paper, Duke had a huge advantage at the faceoff dot. You're 9 for 13. Why? Uh, Justin's been great on the whistle. Um, he's done a really good job. And I, obviously with some wink play, we had some hustle plays there that have really helped us as well. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Under John Tillman, Maryland has played on Memorial Day five times. 
30 minutes away from getting back there for a sixth time. The Terps close the first half on a 4-0 run. Bernhardt continues to be unstoppable. 8-3 Maryland to Chris Cotter in the studio. Thirty minutes in the books, thirty minutes to play, and Maryland with a five-goal lead on Duke. As we're about ready for the start of the third quarter, and Ishraf, Quint Kesnick, Paul Carcaterra down on the field. Duke has thirty minutes to figure out its identity. Thirty minutes and fourteen games in, no one has figured out how to stop Jared Bernhardt. We thought maybe J.T. Giles Harris, National Defenseman of the Year, had a chance. He got hurt early and. Duke has not had an answer. Now, Maryland's motto is be the best, and right now they're the best in this game by a wide margin. So regardless of whatever the pregame plan was for Duke defensively, I think that's got to be scrapped. Now, this game got off to a, a, a tough start for the Duke defense and JT Giles Harris, the national defender of the year. You see a hit, and then his own teammate is angled into his left knee, which hyperextends. He's been in pain the entire first half. He doesn't look to be 100%, but he's gutting it out. Meanwhile, Jared Bernhardt continues his postseason tear. Six goals in round one, five goals in the quarterfinals, three goals, two assists so far. If you play Maryland to stop Bernhardt, they can beat you by moving the ball. If you want to take away the crisp passing and ball movement, Kark, they can give it to Bernhardt on an island. There does not seem to be an answer for this offense. And it's not just Duke that's dealing with it. College lacrosse dealt with it all season long. Bernhardt has been an outlier. But I just spoke to John Donowski, Duke's head coach, and he told me about JT and his health. He said he's banged up, but he's a fifth-year senior. There's no way he's leaving this game. A couple things offensively. He said they're holding on to the ball way too long. Basic exchanges, catching and throwing. An issue, And then on defense, they're slide happy. They just have to stay true to their matchups and have a little bit more faith in the one-on-one -on -one matchups. No face-off to begin the third quarter. Maryland starts man up. 26 seconds on the Maryland extra man. As the Terps look to extend a five-goal lead. There is Bernhardt. Carpenter. Knocking it away, and a cause turnover, and a sign of life for Duke at the start of the third. Duke needs a juice play. They need to change the mojo of this game. Well, that's an opportunity to get things maybe rolling back in their favor. Got a good reaction from their bench on that turnover. Can they make it matter? And a flag coming against Maryland, Brower lost his stick, so now Duke will go man up. Duke went offside there to end the play, but prior there was a flag down. They Number 13 catch, red, offside, 30. They catch Griffin Brown, and the Duke man up unit that is six for its last nine, including today, will have a chance. That was an inter interesting sequence. Maryland had 13 on the field, but three of them were coaches. Coach Tillman was way out of the coaching box. Bob Benson was on the field. Even Jesse Bernhardt, the normal, normally calm and sedated defensive coordinator, was uh, onto the field to argue that call. Brennan O'Neill, nine extra man goals. 34 and White has been the guy. I'd like to start with Sowers and then skip it to O'Neill. Full strength and nothing even resembling a shot attempt. Robertson from the outside and an easy save. Not much in line of patterns there, Quint, the extra man. A lot of times you'll see a, a change of formation and some play from behind where Sowers would pick a side, but, but that extra man unit right there looks stagnant. Yeah, they started out in a circle. They changed the formation all, all while the ball's thrown around the outside. You know, when you're a goalie, you're sitting there saying, okay, you want to throw the ball around the outside? The clock's ticking. That's 
fine with me. Duke barely avoided upset last week against Loyola. John Donowski told us guys were passive, afraid to make plays. We got less than 30 minutes left in your season. Bernhardt's made plays all season long. DeMeo, fifth year senior from San Diego. Maryland's win last week at Notre Dame and he's one of the most intense quarterfinal games I can remember. Kyle Long to Bernhardt, save Adler. Rebound to DeMeo. And now we're moving to the new eight. And in our conversation with Don Tillman this week, Park, he talked about the heat, the recovery we need to get off that effort. I think they caught a big break today with the full temperature. They did. And they were lucky they flew back right after that game and got a couple days rest. The temperatures are cool here, but what's impressive about this unit, too, on offense right now is much attention Bernhardt gets. Kyle Long, 23 in red, is a fantastic playmaker off the dodge. Carpenter picks up Bernhardt. Hammond's pass to Wisnowskis, Brower all over Logan Wisnowskis. Long for Maltz. Maryland able to keep it on the offensive half. You can't go over and back, but only in the first 20 seconds of the shot clock. Looking for the cutter. Bernhardt there to back up with 10. Bernhardt beating Long. Hesitation. Looking for faults. Deep ball. That's a big defensive stop for Duke. That had a shot clock reset. That was a long defensive possession. Duke's packing it in. And Danny Maltz, 37 in red, is their crease guy. He's their in-sky guy. And he's not really having a lot of opportunity. So in this second half, I think Maryland is going to have to stretch it a little bit in terms of their outside shooters. Guys like Griffin Brown. Meanwhile, defensively, the Terps have shackled the Blue Devils. Grill's done a nice job on Sowers. Maycar's done a nice job on O'Neal. And no one else has stepped up. Puglisi with Lowry, stride for stride. O'Neal did not have an angle. He's a lefty. Left hand three. McNamee to save, and that's been the other factor for Maryland. McNamee's playing his best game of the tourney. Puglisi the other way! It started with the save, and then Roman Puglisi in transition for his 13th career goal. This is an element that makes this sport so riveting. McNaney with a clean stop. Maryland breaks out. Puglisi sniffs it. They disrespect him. He's a defensive midfielder. Parting of the Red Sea. Wow. Maryland has Roman Puglisi. Duke does not have that type of player in the middle of the field from the short stick defensive midi position that can make a play like that. Dan O'Connell at the faceoff backs. Duke trying everything. The Holy Cross transfer. A loose ball push on Duke. Maryland has it back. Oh, now they'll say it's Duke ball. Maryland's goalie, Logan McNaney, has done a wonderful job on ground balls and outlet passing late in the season. A bad shot gets punished with a, a beautiful lob pass to an open target, like a quarterback hit, hitting a post pattern. Now we've seen him score a goal, too. Makar the takeaway, Ledman the trail check, picks it up, plays it back to Sowers. 
Schur jumps off of Sowers, who's now defended by Grill as Duke moves it to the near side. Joe Robertson's been quiet. And White had the game winner in overtime in the quarters. Another turnover by Duke. Maryland pressing on. Duke milling in retreat. That's been the case since the start of the second quarter. Not close. Bernhardt dominating play. Bernhardt against Giles Harris. Good defense there. A six goal lead for the Terps. Check. Bernhardt to Griffin Brown. 15 to shoot. It comes back to Holden. The Hobart transfer against Nikai Montgomery. Bernhardt from the wing. Maneuvers in. Adler got a piece of it. It's loose. Brower. He buttons his way out of trouble. Terrific ground ball by Kenny Brower and strong two-hand cradle to traffic. Sophomore lefty. He's a player. Yeah, with the COVID year, he's got three more years of eligibility. This is the type of player that could be a national defender of the year, 43 in white, Kenny Brower. Clark Duke only has two shots in the last 12 minutes. Shots. It's incredible. When I spoke to John Donowski, he mentioned his defense needs to time their slides properly. Maryland's defense is timing their slides and their help and support perfectly. Now Sowers circles around McNeely there, a stone wall in the cage. A Duke offense that averages more than 15 goals held to three. Maryland, the number two scoring offense in the country. Only behind North Carolina. The Heels lost to Virginia earlier today in the first semifinal. The top four scoring offenses all advanced to championship weekend this year. The most star-studded field we've seen. We're getting closer to narrowing it to two. Virginia and the winner of this game. Osnowskis against Dyson Williams, Maltz the face, DeMeo over to Long in a shot clock violation. Hey, that's fine. Maryland works so hard on offense. You know, people who think offense is stand around and watch a guy dodge to the goal. All six parts are constantly moving and thinking, hey, what's going to happen next? Where do I need to be if this pass is made? Like, they're constantly a step ahead. I would agree with you, Quint. When I look at their offense, there's a similar approach to North Carolina this season in regards to just the pieces of the puzzle. The five guys without the ball work just as hard as the guy with the ball. And when you can embody that type of characteristic in your offense, everyone's going to eat. Everyone's going to share the ball. It's not about who's scoring the goals. Everyone gets the touches. Ledman missed the cage. Stay with Duke. Robertson closest to the ball. Lennox went out. Joe Robertson 
honorable mention, All-American. Now Brennan O'Neill, the ACC's freshman of the year. Quigley defended well by Bubba Fairman. Montgomery turned away by Maycar. Shot clock at seven. There's Montgomery, shot clock at three. Another Duke possession that comes up empty. Slides and help. That's what's defined this Maryland defense. Jesse Bernhardt, the defensive coordinator, a Team USA player, and a star in the rising in terms of the coaching profession. These guys are such selfless type of players. It's unbelievable in terms of both sides of the field for Maryland right now. The defense is perfect in terms of the support help in the slides. We come up on three and a half to play in this third quarter. It's been all terms. Winner to championship Monday. Hold him to the wing. Top shelf. Logan Wisnowskis Stark. You can't leave him open there. That's his sweet spot. They're packing it in. The Duke defense. Daring a Turk to stretch shoot. Well, if you've watched Logan Wisnowskis long enough, the day he stepped on campus at Maryland, the high wing lefty shooter, if you give him this kind of time, he will pick apart an opposing goalie. Look at the placement on the righty goalie. Top left. Lacrosse, a family affair for the Bernhards. Jesse Bernhardt, a two-time All-American at Maryland, now an assistant coach. Older brother Jake, an All-American at Maryland, now an assistant at Vermont. And Jared, the youngest of three, the best player in the country this season, and almost the surefire to Wartown favorite now. When I spoke to Jared at practice yesterday, I said, is your mom coming, Catherine? He said, yeah, she'll be here. So Catherine's here. I said, what about Jake, who's an assistant in Vermont? He goes, no, Jake's not coming Saturday. I'm like, he goes, we haven't talked, actually. I'm like, what do you mean? When you pointed at him after after you scored that goal against Vermont, he was upset? He goes, no, he's at PLL training camp. So Jake is a, a okay. midfielder, a pro midfielder. Now, one of the great brotherly Set. moments of round one, Jared Bernhardt scoring the goal against Vermont. Point to his brother Jake, a little taunt on the sideline. And it's so out of character for Jared, who John Tillman says is the most soft spoken, un unassuming type of player. He's not the loud type of leader the way Matt Rambo or Colin Hickok were. But he said when it comes to him and his brothers, it's a different side of Bernhardt that comes out. Oh, yeah, everyone's. Mac talks with their brothers. But, you know, when, when you look at a guy like Jared Bernhardt, he's leading differently than, say, a superstar like Matt Rambo and Colin Heacock in 2017. And that's why I think John Tillman had to evolve, too. He allowed Heacock and Rambo in 2017 to be big voices. Jared's not a big voice, but he's a leader on the field, and everyone follows him in terms of his work ethic. And you just feel something different about this guy this season. You just feel like he's on a mission. There's Maycar after another Duke turnover. It has been the nightmare of real things for Duke. And Maryland offensively flowing like a cascade. Jared is the most quiet of the trio of brothers. John Tillman saying, I just give him space. Someone also saying that he's found a certain mental clarity this season. I go back to 2017 when he's a freshman on the Terps National Championship team. He's kind of afraid to shoot as a midfielder. Then in 18, played behind the goal. Made his money feeding Connor Kelly up top. When his dad got sick in 2019 and passed away in the summer of cancer, Jim Bernhardt, who's uh, just widely respected and loved in lacrosse and football coaching circles. That was a setback for Jared in late in 2019 and then into 2020. And then Quint not playing this fall, I think he was able to hit the reset button, right? He was chasing college football a lot like Doc Sakin from Virginia was and 
Statement when Ferris State didn't have the season. He would have played there in the fall, but because of COVID, stayed down in Florida, trained in a different kind of energy and purpose when he returned to College Park. Spent time with his mom, Catherine. So when he came back, there was a certain hunger. Paul, as you said, man on a mission. And that's, that's what it's been. What's his future hold? We don't know. He's a third-round pick in the PLL draft in terms of lacrosse. Ferris State being option quarterbacks on the table. I think if I'm Mike Loxley, Mike Loxley, the head coach of Maryland football, I invite him out. I, I just haven't seen an athlete like Jerry Bernhardt play lacrosse in, I don't know, a decade or two. Less than a minute to go in this third quarter. Bernhardt, a save by Adler. Maryland wins the race to the sideline. New shot clock. Doesn't really matter with 45 seconds to go in the quarter. And the Terps will try to tack on. Six unanswered for Maryland. This one knocked down. Adler tried to recover it. It trickles in. Bernhard scoop and score from inside on the rebound. Watch number one. He's right in the middle of the slot area. Pick it up. A little trash. Quick wrists. Paul, his back of the net. His shooting has improved dramatically since his freshman year. His off ball play too. I mean. In 2017, when he was a secondary option with Heacock and Rambo, he still was a guy that could go to the goal, but his shooting in terms of just finding the seams, and we've seen range from him this year as well. 52% heading into this game. A perimeter player like him, if you're checking in around 35%, you're doing something well. 93 points on the season. That ties way off the single-season school record. Big 10. Offensive player of the year has been a force that nobody's been able to slow down. Seven straight goals. Dyson Williams ends the long scoring drop for two. It's 11 to 4. The Blue Devils went more than 20 minutes without a goal. The one player for Duke that I think you can consistently force feed and jam it inside is Dyson Williams. He was an attackman as a freshman last year. He was Duke's leading scorer before the season was cut short. Move to midfield. Nakai Montgomery's vision. That has been the biggest growth pattern in 15 and White's game. But Dyson Williams, you see him catching that across his face yeah. and in one motion. It's the catch and finish. Why don't they feed him more inside? Underutilized this year. He is sincere and humble as Dyson Williams. Last year in eight games played, 25 goals. He's number three recruit. For whatever, for whatever reason, offensive chemistry hasn't really broke his way this year for Duke. Duke had all the pieces when the season started. Assembly required, though. Whatever they've built, Maryland has taken a blowtorch to it through three quarters. The Terps 15 minutes away from playing for the national championship. Thank you, Chris. By the way, have you seen Petro's mustache? No. Solid, man. Really? Solid. Have you seen Anisha's hair? Solid. Now that's going tomorrow. The haircut is tomorrow. 11-4, Maryland on top of Duke. Fourth quarter underway. Terps have controlled the faceoff backs. McConnell, the Holy Cross transfer, 
who only took seven faceoffs in conference play, gets Duke the ball. They're down by seven. Clark, you saw Duke in desperation mode in a comeback win against Notre Dame. They were down four or five in the fourth quarter, and they almost threw their playbook out the window and gave the ball to Michael Sowers and said, drive, we don't care how you get us there. McNaney the save to take it away from Walsh. Duke's got to extend now on the perimeter. They've got to pick the tempo of this game up. I don't think they can afford to sit back and, and play it straight up as they have been. So you got to get out on the perimeter, overplay the ball, force Maryland to go to the rack. Because time is not on your side if, if you're the Blue Devils. And that is kicking the Hornets' nest. The way Maryland can move the ball. Duke has had trouble timing its slides. Maryland has picked them apart with precision passing. Patience by the Terps. Flag coming. Wisnowskis. No goal. And Maryland goes man up. A little bit more. Right there. You have white, three, Get five, back. slash, personal foul for one minute. Pictures back a little bit. Jared Bernhardt sitting on 199 career points, looking for 200. And had some English on it. Maltz got rid of it. Maryland keeps it in bounds. Fairman and Adler, the goalie. Duke comes away with it. Chopping wood over there. And Maryland gets it back. Still 30 seconds on the man up. And Bernhardt. One more point, not only 200, it would make Bernhardt the single season points leader, one better than Ray Altman. Here is Bernhardt. DeMeo. Over to Wisnowskis. We're six on six. Maltz, the bouncer, save Adler. Loose in front. And vacuumed by the St. Joe's transfer. Adler, it, he's played a strong game, hasn't he, Paul? He, he has. He's been the least of their worries. What concerns me, though, when you're down 11-4, you need to strike in transition, and that's something I haven't seen Duke do a ton. They put up 14 goals per game but it's been in the half field set from a majority of, of what they've done offensively when they've hit on big number games. It's been Michael Sowers, it's been Brennan O'Neill. We haven't seen defense to offense, quick strikes. Well, here's a little new wrinkle today. Sowers initiating from up top. Owen Caputo shot not there. Grill hits the deck, chasing the grounder. It's shoveled ahead. That's a big car. Maryland strength ground balls in their defensive zone. They've got three capable guys off the ground in Maycar, Grill, and Ray Hill. Bernhardt working that time against Giles Harris, the National Defensive Player of the Year. Six points today for Jared Bernhardt. Four goals, two assists. Maycar runs up the field. He's got legs like Saquon Barkley. He's a monster. Maryland will play slow here. Right. 
DeMeo. Left hand laser. A step away underneath. Watch the drop step, Quint. DeMeo catches it. Feels the pressure top side. He's a lefty, so he's not going to get that sweep. So what do you do? Drop step and sting it. Look at this. Sound effects sold separately. The level change, the low release to the high location impacts the goaltender's hands. Adler just with a little dip of the top hand. Suck. Cork, to what you said earlier, not only does Duke have to make up this deficit, but they don't play in transition. They've got to figure out a way to get eight, six on six goals in the last 10 minutes. Yeah, that's a tall task because Maryland has Alex Smith, right? He can run in transition. Roman Puglisi runs in transition, can score. Duke does not have that aspect of their game. And let me tell you something, too. This is a Duke team that's averaged 14 goals. We talk about... Maryland's selfless offense and I mentioned their selfless defense. What does selfless defense mean? Well, it's sliding and understanding and having the confidence in your team to play together that your guy might score, right? So when you slide early, you're worried about your matchup. Is he going to score? Maryland doesn't care about that. They slide at the right time because it's the right move. A lot of defenders sometimes worry about their guys, right? I don't want my guy to score. Maryland believes in their system. And Duke offensively has been silenced. Michael Sowers, only one goal. Brennan O'Neill, only one goal. Duke has connected on just four of 26 shots. A timeout by Maryland and a good one by John Philman. Not looking to seed even a sliver of momentum to John Donowski's Blue Devils. The Terps, nine minutes in to change away from a date with Virginia. Maryland with an eight goal lead, 9.06 to go. Virginia advanced earlier today to Monday's championship, taking out the top seed, UNC. Virginia and Maryland played in a memorable and somewhat controversial quarterfinal. Somewhat. 2019. Somewhat. As you said, one of the worst calls you've seen covering this sport on this stage. The worst. Virginia came back from five down in the fourth quarter to beat Maryland that year. Aided by a goal call on a shot that hit the boat, uh, hit the pipe and ricocheted 40 yards out towards whoa, midfield. Whoa, 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 whoa. Maryland and Virginia as we get a shot clock violation. Also played in that 2011 championship, John Tillman's first season with the Terps. Colin Briggs, the X Factor in that game. Didn't play in Saturday. Didn't play Saturday for the Cavaliers. Had fresh legs on a, a really hot national championship game. There's so many years, uh, I think the way the semifinals are played impact the finals. McNaney turns another away. That is how much gas is left in the tank. This year, I mean, it's, it's almost Arctic-like conditions today. Temperatures are only 50. Look at Virginia credit. They've changed their entire yearly plan for championship Monday. Sunday is a work day at the University of Virginia lacrosse program. Lars Tiffany brings the guys back in. They do a light workout. So they're they're used to a fast turnaround. It's kind of in their weekly their build schedule for this weekend. And a lot of folks wonder is there an advantage to playing in the early semifinal? 
11 of the last 13 national champions played in the first semifinal. The exceptions, Duke in 2010, Maryland in 2017. Clark gets a slight advantage playing in that first game, no doubt. Oh, yeah, you get the scout. You get the scout, extra you, get extra hours, hours, rest, you get extra hours, yeah. you get an extra meal, you get extra hours of rest. Just Malibur, the freshman. Yeah, there's Malibur, Anish. I think he'll be the guy behind. When Bernhardt leaves, Malibur will run the offense at X. Holden left-handed, the former Hobart statesman came to Maryland for two reasons. To play in the NCAA tournament and to win a national title. They've been a staple in May. Always consistent under John Tillman, his ability to recruit. Guys like Eric Malibur, learn the system, learn from a great like Jared Bernhardt. And Holden catches that ball, feels the pressure, and in one motion spins. Maryland's been shooting lights out. And Holden's got the left-handed rip. He almost scored 100 goals at Hobart. One-year Masters program. He was banged up early in the year, and then came back, and he was kind of pressing to try to get back in the lineup. So Coach Tillman put him on the scout team. And hey, he took scout team hey. reps where he pretended he was Connor Kirst for a couple Rutgers games, and, and that's where he rebuilt his confidence. Yeah, you got to swallow your pride, but when you're a guy like Holden and you're playing at Hobart, the ball's in your stick the majority of the time, right? You're running the offense, and, and you, you can kind of exhaust all your options before you give it up. That's not how Maryland plays. So you got to get acclimated to Bobby Benson's offense and the way John Tillman does things, and the buy-in to be able to respond after getting demoted to the scout team tells you a lot about this kid. This NCAA tournament began. Yes. We have five teams in our crosshairs. Duke, Virginia, Notre Dame, and UNC out of the ACC, and Maryland out of the Big Ten. Four of those five made it to championship weekend. All super teams. Maryland taking down Notre Dame in the quarters. Steamrolling Duke in the semis. If Maryland finishes it on Monday, going through Notre Dame, Duke, and Virginia, three teams from the best ACC that we've seen, that is one heck of a run to perfection and through this NCAA tournament. No doubt. they got to get Jared Bernhardt out of this game. Fourth quarter, five minutes to go, up this amount of goals. And you got the franchise still out there. Do you remember a guy named Dylan Malloy, Hart from Brown? Failure to advance by Duke. They could not get it across midfield. NCAA lacrosse coverage continues tomorrow. The Women's Championship, noon Eastern, BC and Syracuse. We get to see Charlotte North best player in the country, the BC Star. For more information on the 2021 Men's and Women's Lacrosse Championships, visit NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA Championships. It'll be a first-time champion. Either way. Jared Bernhardt, the punctuation. The best player in the country. Call it a day. Yes, call it a day is right. Two hundred career goals. He sets the single season points record. He has rewritten the Maryland record book. He has had at least five goals in every NCAA tournament game this year. Dealing with pressure able to run away from it and he nailed the dismount
We watched him after the Vermont game sign in with cross balls in College Park and as if he didn't want to leave the stadium that day. Remember, as a youngster watching his older brothers play for Maryland, he was in the locker room when he was like 10, 11, 12 years old. This is a program that's been a part of his life for a, a lot longer than just this four or five years. And I just watched him sign and it was like he didn't want to leave, you know? It was like that, that place became a part of him. The Bernhards here are what the Powells are to Syracuse. Brandon O'Neill, the freshman. Great career ahead for him, but for Jared Bernhardt, 200 career goals. Only four players on that list. The others, Zach Greer and Justin Gutter in the Duke. Pick Pick Keith, the all-time goals leader for Penn State. He did it this year with a monster X on his back. Every team tried to stop him. All right, that was the headline of every scouting report when you played Maryland. Stop number one, and no one could do it. We'll talk about it Monday, but historically, if you're a Maryland fan, there's just two guys now. It's Frank Urso, who won two national champions. Chips, who's a multiple first-team All-American. And Jared Bernhardt. Those guys are 1-2-2-1, one, two, two, one, depending on what happens on Monday afternoon. It's a generational debate now. Urso was a four-time first-team All-American at the midfield. They'll both have the two national titles. It's a good debate to have, but when you're in a conversation with Frank Urso, you're a legend. Final minutes of Michael Sauer's collegiate career. Princeton last year, had there been a Tawarton Award, Sowers was the runaway favorite. In the midst of the greatest season ever, he was averaging more than nine points a game. He came to Duke, and so did this guy, Brennan O'Neill, the freshman. Duke was the preseason favorite. McNaney, another save. It was depth, it was experience, it was talent. It was good but never great. We kind of waited for Duke to play that A-plus game. And we never saw it against elite competition. Yet they still found ways to win. Now on this stage, everyone's got the talent. The best are left. And the offensive chemistry, Sowers had his moments, no doubt. In the end of that Notre Dame game, I'll never forget. This high point game was incredible. I'm not sure the system ever quite worked to perfection with him. The good news for fans is you get to see him in the PLL. He'll be playing pro for the Water Dogs, number two pick. That starts next week. He'll be in the mix for Team USA. He's an amazing player. When you look what he's done since the moment he stepped on the field as a freshman at Princeton, Michael Sowers delivered answer the bell but in this season the best player in the country has been Jared Bernhardt and in this NCAA tournament there has not been a close second the speed is unmatched and Jared Bernhardt I mentioned earlier has been on a mission from the moment he stepped back on College Park's campus it's amazing, there's nothing he can't do. He showed you a little bit of everything today. The dodging, the shooting off ball, the passing. It's Jared Bernhardt's team. He might not be a vocal type leader, but it's his team. He's an introvert off the field. He's dealt with the passing of his dad in the summer of 2019. A dad who was a college football coach, and extremely well respected both at Maryland and nationally. He's come back as, as a man on a mission, and he's played like a man all season long. 16 goals in this NCAA tournament. Five goals, two assists today. Heart like Hercules, feet like Hermes, shoulders as wide as Atlas. He has played like a man on a mission, and he is our Capital One player of the game. No surprise. It has been one sublime performance after another for Jared Bernhardt. 
And you saw late in the season when the stakes were raised. Really that Big Ten semi against Michigan. Where eight, eight goals or so? Eight goals, two assists, and it was almost a ruthless, untouched, I can do what I want and I know it, and you can't stop me. Yeah, like, I got more. I'm like, oh, you got more? There's more? This is pretty good. You got more? Yeah, I got more. Like, I've been kind of coasting along here during the regular season. Now there's more. We'll get more on Monday. The matchup with Virginia is very long, rangy defense will be fascinating. Virginia will try to do what nobody's done this season. That's stop Bernhardt. This is a Cavaliers team, though, Kark, that is playing its best ball late in the season. Give me your first glance at Monday's title game. Two things that separate Virginia in terms of the turnaround, right? Because we had a lot of questions and moments in 2021. One was their off-ball defense. They'll have to play the way they have been down the stretch. They fine-tuned ways to play together, to communicate. Maryland moves the ball at hyperspeed. That's one thing that they'll need to do against Jared Bernhardt and the Terps. The other thing, the middle of the field, a question mark for Virginia and their short stick deep middies. Could they get transition? Could they get loose balls? Today they did. But Maryland has those guys as well with Roman Puglisi and Alex Smith. So I think there's going to be tremendous unit matchups in this game. One more for Sowers. That's just bookkeeping. 14 to 5. A two time to Warton finalist. One of the most prolific scores in the history of the game. Tough ending. He's shown humility, respect. He's always been super polite with us, and the kid is a worker. It's been fun to watch him play. Good news is now with pro lacrosse, we get to see him take take his exploits to the pro game, where, where he, he will light up the scoreboard and be super fun to watch. For the sixth time under John Tillman, Maryland will play on Memorial Day. A dismantling and demolition of the team everyone thought was the team when the season began. Duke, the Terps remain unbeaten, playing for history, looking to make this one of the great runs through the NCAA tournament. They took down Notre Dame. They vaporized Duke. They get the reigning champion Virginia on Monday. And it was Virginia that ended Maryland's season the last time the Terps were in the NCAA tournament in 2019. Final score from East Hartford. Maryland 14, Duke 5. It'll be the Terps. And the Cavaliers on Championship Monday. Quint Clark and I will be with you then. That does it from East Hartford. We'll see you Memorial Day.